Assalamu alaikum. This is Dr. Ali Hasnan Sheikh uh, from the ENT department. Uh, you know that we have discussed chronic superative otitis media in detail. We have discussed its types and all the management plan. Today uh, we are basically concentrate. We'll, we would basically concentrate on the intratemporal complications of chronic superative otitis media. Chronic superative otitis media has intratemporal and intracranial complications. But uh, what are the factors which are causing these complications? Uh, these factors include like patient age, patient belonging to extremes of age, those who are in the first decade of their life and elderly patients are at higher risk of developing complications. Similarly, people belonging to poor social economic group and um, those who are infected by organisms which have high virulence or if uh, if patient is in immunocompromised state because of age or because of uncontrolled diabetes or he is using chemotherapeutic agents such patients are at higher risk of developing complications similarly if there are preformed pathways then infection can easily spread through preformed pathways in the middle ear cleft like if there is dehiscence of bony facial canal or there is a pathway formed because of previous ear surgery, stepidectomy, or patient has developed perilymph fistula. These patients are also at higher risk of developing complications. You know that aticoandral type, which is also called as dangerous type, uh, it has cholestatoma. Cholestatoma releases enzymes which causes bone erosion and this bone erosion results in easy spread of infection beyond the confines of middle ear cleft and these patients can develop complications. Well, uh, how would this infection spread? This infection can spread by direct bone erosion or by causing venous thrombophlebitis or again through preformed pathways like if there is an oval or round window, there is an oval or round window in middle ear cleft and infection can easily spread through oval and round window or there is the essence of any bony covering of jugular bulb or there is the essence of tegment tympani then this infection can transfer or transmit or spread easily through the middle ear cleft well if we classify the complication it is the intratemporal complication and intracranial complication the intratemporal complications include mastoiditis petrocytis facial paralysis and labyrinthine infection how would a patient of acute mastoiditis would present to you? Basically, mastoiditis can be because of acute otitis media or because of chronic superative otitis media when the infection spreads beyond the mucosa and involves the underlying bone of the mastoid air cell system, then this patient would develop mastoiditis. Patient would present with symptoms of pain behind the ear, fever and ear discharge. And if you examine this patient, you can elicit mastoid tenderness. Patient would definitely have ear discharge. There can be sagging of the posterior superior medial wall, which is because of periosteitis of the bony party wall between the antrum and deeper posterior superior part of the bony canal. There would be perforation of tympanic membrane. There would be swelling over the mastoid and there would be definitely hearing loss, which would be of conductive type. You would take an ear swab send it for culture and sensitivity you would advise complete blood count along with esr you would advise mastoid x-ray or ct scan temporal bone depending on which facility is available in order to confirm your diagnosis this patient should be differentiated from other conditions which are quite similar to uh, mastoid abscess like if patient has superation of mastoid lymph nodes or patient might have uh, furuncle of the meatus, which means he has severe otitis externa or there is an infected sebaceous cyst. Sebaceous cyst has a punctum which can differentiate mastoid abscess from sebaceous cyst and if patient has severe otitis externa or furunculosis of the external artery canal then he would have severe tenderness over the tragus. This patient should be managed by admitting and then he's, the, he's put on triple regime. Triple regime includes injection co-amoxiclave 1.2 grams IV 8 hourly which is given after test dose. Injection ceftriaxone 1 gram IV 12 hourly again given after test dose. And injection 
metronidazole 500 mg IV 8 hourly and no test doses is required before administrating this antibiotic. If patient has presented in acute otitis media stage and uh, there is no suppuration yet, that is, he is having pain and his tympanic membrane is bulging. You can do myringotomy to relieve pain and relieve the condition. But once the patient has developed mastoiditis, whether it is because of acute otitis media or it is because of tuber tympanic or aticoandral type of chronic superative otitis media, this patient needs cortical mastoidectomy. What is basoid abscess? Basically, basoid abscess is an abscess in relation to the mastoid infection. It is collection of pus along the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Patient would develop swelling in the upper part of the neck. So, there is abscess again. If there is abscess around the posterior belly of the digastric muscle, then this would be called as Satili's abscess. We have discussed the treatment plan. Uh, the second complication is petrocytus. Petrocytus, if the infection spreads to the petrous part of the temporal bone, then this patient would develop petrocytus and he would present with the following clinic, clinical features. The lateral rectus palsy because of involvement of sixth nerve, the deep-seated ear or retroorbital pain and persistent ear discharge. This triad is called as Gradinigo syndrome. If you are given the scenario and your SEQ part of your paper, it would be mentioned in that scenario that the, the, there is this patient who has ear discharge. He has diplopia on lateral gaze. Diplopia means double vision. He has pain uh, in the deeper part of the ear or behind the eye. And he has complaint of persistent ear discharge. If this triad is given to you in the, your scenario, this means that this patient has developed the complication of petrocytus. Considering the treatment, Patient again is again put on to uh, triple regime that is uh, on uh, coamoxiclave, um, ceftriaxone and metronidazole. And in addition to that, uh, sometimes patient would definitely need mastoid exploration. But uh, nowadays with the advent of modern antibiotics, you don't need to explore the fistula tract which is formed by the disease process in the middle ear cleft. Only the IV antibiotics are good enough to treat this condition. Facial nerve paralysis. If patient has acute otitis media and he's devel he develops facial nerve paralysis, then this patient would need IV triple regime. In addition to that, low dose steroids. And if there is no discharge from the middle ear, myringotomy can be done to relieve the condition. This would be enough. And if patient has tubotympanic disease and he de develops facial nerve paralysis, then uh, th again no surgical intervention is required. Uh, you would put patient on triple regime and low dose steroids, that would be enough. But if a patient has aticoandral disease and he develops facial nerve paralysis, then urgent mastoid exploration is required in this case. Well, if there is labyrinthine infection, that is called labyrinthitis. It is of three types, the circumscribed labyrinthitis, labyrinthine fistula is, uh, is formed in 10% of cases of chronic superative rhitis media. The other type is diffuse serous labyrinthitis and the last type is diffuse superative, superative labyrinthitis. <coughs> when there is thinning or erosion of the bony labyrinth exposing the endosteum, that condition is called labyrinthine fistula or circumscribed labyrinthitis. This patient would present with a positive fistula test, which means when, a, when certain inward pressure is applied on the tragus, this increase in air pressure in the ear canal stimulates the labyrinth and thus patient would develop nystigmus. The nystigmus in this case, the first component of nystigmus would be towards the diseased ear. Whenever there is an irritative lesion, within the middle ear cleft, which is stimulating or irritating the labyrinthine system, that would induce a nystigmus whose fast component would be towards the disease ear. But if there is a condition which, is, which has knocked out the labyrinthine system, which has, called vestibular, which has caused vestibular failure, or uh, that paralytic lesion would cause a nystigmus whose fast component would be away from the disease ear towards the healthy ear. The other types of 
labyrinthitis being the serious and superlative labyrinthitis in serious labyrinthitis there is intralabyrinthine inflammation without pus formation and is a reversible condition whereas in superlative labyrinthitis there is pyogenic infection of the labyrinth with permanent loss of vestibular and cochlear infection and there is pus formation in in diffuse serous labyrinthitis patient would have vertigo and nausea and in severe cases vertigo is worse with marked nausea and vomiting and even spontaneous nystagmus can be there again in this case the first component of nystagmus would be towards the disease year whereas in superlative labyrinthitis patient would have severe vertigo his vestibular and cochlear functions are lost patient would have dead ear he would have spontaneous nystagmus and the first component of the nystagmus is away from the disease ear that is towards the normal ear the treatment plan is same for uh, all types of labyrinthitis that is these patients are basically uh, admitted in the ward they are admitted in the hospital and uh, uh, they are uh, given absolute bed rest with head immobilization they are put on antibacterial therapy that is the triple regime patient is given labyrinthine uh, sedatives like prochlorperazine and diamenhydrinate and the surgical intervention if you're planning to do cortical mastoidectomy if let us suppose patient has developed mastoiditis along with that or patient has chronic superlative type anticoagulant type of uh, chronic superlative arthritis median he has developed labyrinthi labyrinthitis then this patient would be uh, admitted he would be given antibacterial therapy labyrinthine sedatives and once his vertigo is settled then the surgical intervention is done it is not done during active phase of vertigo once his vertigo is settled <coughs> patient uh, the definite surgical treatment is introduced in case of atrochondral disease it would be uh, mastoid exploration the modified radical or radical mastoidectomy if anyone has any question they can contact me uh, on my cell number or they can come to the department for detailed discussion thank you very much हाँ जी मैंने स्केप दबा दिया था